Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear you on this Friday morning, getting ready for a great weekend in the outdoors in a Florida Panhandle, a one-of-a-kind place. Well, I know all of us are just tickled to be here. Take a look at our weather brought to us by Drew Pollard's company, Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Good, hardworking folks up there. Looking at a high today of 76, low of 56. Really, really pretty day. Going to have some, about 10% chance of rain. A little bit of rain coming in. Uh, that is going to be a cooler, a little cool snap coming, but it's not, not too bad. It's not going to be a real cold snap. Just a cool snap. So you still can get outdoors. The water temperature at the end of the pier, how about 63.2? Went up another degree yesterday. So that I love this, this patterns of nature doing these kind of things. Our river readings, the Appalachia of Town. We're looking at a good decent reading of 9.8. It's still high. The river's still high on a big river. On the Choctahatchee River, it's at a 6.0. Got a little bit of a drop to it. Should be a really nice weekend on the Choctahatchee and all those feeder creeks coming into the Choctahatchee, the Sisters, the Black Creek, and, and Holmes Creek, all those creeks going into a special place over there. Take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good strong tide today is February the 25th. Strong tide today. We've got the low tide this morning at 3.35, coming in to 4.30 this afternoon. Got a little bit of a south wind, about somewhere between 9 and 10. So it's going to be a, a nice day to be on the water. Okay, we're going to take a break. We've got a call coming up. We're going to call one of our viewers. and So we'll be right back after the break. Okay, welcome back, folks. And on the phone, we have Matthew Grantham. And he's going to be talking about the big turkey bank we're coming up next weekend up in Holmes County. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, good morning. How's everything up your way? Oh, everything's going. The birds are gobbling and strutting, and, and uh, we're getting ready for getting ready for a big turnout next weekend at the Holmes County High School. Okay, tell us a little bit about it. Um, banquet will be on March the fifth. Doors will open at five thirty. Um, we still have some tables that we can that we can sell to businesses and or private parties if if anybody is wanting to purchase tables or anything like that um tickets can be purchased online or they can be purchased at the door um m and w barbecue right there in bonifay <clears throat> bonifay is going to um cater the event we'll have uh, smoked chicken pulled pork macaroni and cheese baked beans coleslaw and a dessert Woo! that sounds good yeah i don't know where you can find a better home-cooked meal um, on a Saturday night, if you ain't got no plans. Okay, and what are all y'all giving? Y'all okay? Gonna have some raffles on the guns and all? What's that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we've got um, we will we're gonna do just like any other NWTF event. We've got some homemade um box calls by a fella by the name of Sam Pope out of Chattanooga Game Calls. Um, there'll be fifteen of those, and and if anybody has ever been to the event, they know that if you. Uh, when we auction those box calls off, if you purchase a box call, your name goes in the hat for a gun of, for the gun of the year. Um, and the gun of the year is a 20 gauge Franchi uh, with NWTF engravings on it. Um, but other than that gun, I think I counted up this morning. I've got 17 guns that will be uh, raffled off and auctioned off, and that's not counting what our table sponsors. Um, if we sell 10 tables, those 10 tables get a chance at a gun as well. All right, that's awesome. And one thing about it, Matthew, you don't have to be a turkey hunter to go to these banquets. It's open for that's anybody. Right. That's right, anybody. The yeah. boys outdoors there in Jackson County, uh, they, uh, they donated a bow package for the event. So whether a young man wins it or an old man wins it, you get your pick of a total bow package from McCoy's Outdoors. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're looking forward to hearing from you, and uh, we'll keep promoting it. And all you folks up there in that Holmes County, Washington County, Jackson County, all join up on that celebration. Matthew, yep, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, good job there. It's always exciting to have these outdoor events coming up, and uh, I really uh, appreciate the effort put in by so many different outdoorsmen and all. Now, what I have a couple of pictures I want to get get to if I can. We've got a, got a lot to cover today. One of the things I wanted to, let's see, let's start right here. I know you've seen this this week, uh, uh, but anyway, Palodrome Week, every day through the end of the month, we'll, we'll read the same forward or backwards. So this is this week through the, uh, it's really cool. I know y'all, most of y'all have seen this, but I, I just think it was fascinating. Probably won't see that anytime soon again. We talked about redfish. We're going to talk about some more. Buddy David Bender, he hadn't been fishing in a while. He just wanted to get out with Harris Marshall. And look at that. Is that not a pretty redfish right there? Y'all see the background where it is? <laughs> Michael Harris, you see that? Okay. Uh, this memory popped up. I had to show it to you because I want to talk about it. This was eight years ago, uh, uh, two days ago, eight years ago. And you see the quail. I want to go quail hunting again. Folks, nobody can find any quail. There's no quail for sale in the southeast. If you know of any quail, let me know. Well, uh, people are asking for them. Next weekend, we'll talk more about this. I might have a guest coming on talking about a rodeo next weekend. When an insurance company wants to diagram an accident, <laughs> that's, that's a big deer running across the road. We talked about that on the show yesterday about these deer all over the place at night. Drive careful, especially in this fog. I sent my grandkids this picture here. The azaleas are blooming. I, uh, it's just something special to me. I told them that when I, on my message I sent to them, I said it reminded me of two things. Number one, the beauty of God's nature. And number two, spring is right around the corner. So they all got tickled on that. So, okay. If we're not meant to have midnight snacks, why is there a light in the fridge? It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? How about our buddy Houston Taylor? Year after year, month after month, Houston Taylor comes up with big fish. He's been doing his whole life. He caught and released this big bass. A good job, Houston Taylor. You know, he's been on the show a lot. He needs to come do a show with us. Okay, also March the 5th, that, okay, the Boat America, we talked about the Coast Guard Auxiliary being here. Now the correct number, let me go to the correct number here. Let me see. Here's the correct number to call Laura. 850-873-3538. I'm, I'm sorry, 3583. <laughs> okay, that is tricky right there. Okay. Inigo, Inigo, he's one of my former students. What he did, he went fishing during lunch, okay? And I, he's a good fisherman. I want to show you where he fished. He's in a construction business. Folks, these ponds they fish in, they're nothing fancy. Look at there. He's catching them. You see what he's fishing with right there? And what he's fishing with as a bait and a reel. So lunchtime, I brought that up just talk about lunchtime fishing and how, how cool that is, okay? Uh, Got a couple other things. We'll just talk about these later. I want to go ahead and get a, uh, go ahead and get. Uh, let's go and take a break now, so we'll get caught up. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. You know, the other day we were talking about shed hunting and different things you can do with the antlers, and I tell you, the crafts are a lot of fun things to do. Even if you're not a big hunter or something, still find these horns out in, all through the woods and all. And anyway, I'm gonna show a couple of things. And this one's special to me here. This is a lamp. And now the reason it's special, one of my students made it for me, but it's falling apart and I can't get it back together. <laughs> it, they did, okay, it had three pieces. And okay, three pieces, it goes together like this, okay? And, but, and then it rests like that, but I cannot figure it out. He, he used hot glue, bless his heart, and it lasted it stayed up in the classroom for about a month, and then it sort of fell down a little bit. But I want to get this back together. Anyway, you can make a lamp stand, stand out of it. In fact, he had the shade. This was his outdoor project, just like that. That looks better with my face out of it, don't it? But anyway, that's something you can do, make all kind of lamps and all. I just, uh, but I want to get this back. And I was, uh, one of the things, talking about lamps in my, as a kid, I had an uncle who was very uh, handy with woodwork and all and he, up, up there in Liberty County. He would go out down to the river swamp and cut these, what we call cypress knees. That's those cypress roots that come up and just sort of, they're beautiful if you've never seen them in nature. Some of them just all different sizes and shapes. And he would, he would hand saw and bring, bring them home every now and then. He would drill out, I found something close to it. He would drill out the bottom here, he'd drill out the bottom and run the wire through it and put the lamp like on top here, like that. And of course, they're a lot more beautiful than these pieces here. but. Uh, he made these lamps and it was so cool. And uh, I just thought that's something else you can do with nature stuff and all, because there's plenty of cypress needs out there. But I don't, I don't know if you can cut them out, it might be protected, but back in those days, 
and it definitely won't protect it. So these are some of the things you can do with, with these uh, uh, nature things. But uh, anyway, I want to put up a couple of pictures. I've got a couple of pictures here. I have a bunch of things you can do. Here, here's my first one I want to show you. You get some horns and just make a little poster. And I thought this is a good one to hang up to so just laugh. And we, if, we don't laugh enough, folks, in the course of a day. Just, if you don't laugh at yourself, then you're missing something. I laugh at myself all day at different things. And, of course, all kind of wreaths and all. We have, we have some Christmas, uh, Christmas wreath with some horns in them. And, uh, and this, uh, this is what you can do for your wife's birthday. Honey, I got something for you to hang your jewelry on. I know she wants that. I'm going to get something out of my wife. And then little baskets. Isn't that a cool little basket right here to hold the wood and everything? It'd be really creative with nature. And how about it? Toilet paper holder, paper towel holder, especially in something like you've got a rustic place like old fish camp or something. Or you got your she shed or man cave. Just some fun things to put in them. Now, if you don't think these things are expensive, I looked them up just so y'all would know. This is a set of uh, Boone and Crockett. Uh, but now, look at there. What's the price? Nine hundred and ninety-nine at point ninety-five, right at a thousand dollars a set. So people that sell these things, and you can, you can do all kinds of things with them. Though, but I just wanted to to share this with you with different uh, different things you can do with outdoor uh, stuff. You know, I just uh, love doing those kinds of things, arts and crafts. And uh, I've got a, I'm I'm really I'm on I'm gonna put this back together somehow. If you ever figure out how it goes, let me know. I, I can't figure out how it goes. It has some hot glue on it and different things like that. Okay, let's see, we gotta get ready. We, well, I got another minute too. There were a couple of pictures I wanna share with you also we got coming up. One of the things about Friday, we'll try to get so much in the show. Uh, let me see. We got, I wanna give a shout out to the Southeastern Dog Hunters Association again on what they were doing to clean up. The, okay, this is at the Blackwater hunting area. This is over there in Okaloosa County. Walton Oakley's County, look at the trash that they were able to pick up uh, last weekend. The Southeastern Outdoor Dog Hunter Association, you can see, look at all this stuff. You, you know, you wouldn't think outdoors would make such a mess, but they did a great job cleaning it up, and all, just people just go out and would throw stuff out. That's just, uh, that's just riffraff doing those kind of things. So, uh, let's see. Another thing I wanted to talk about, if I can get it in, this. Also, one more thing I want to talk about the next weekend also, the Florida Blood Tracking Seminar, at, uh, uh, March the uh, 4th and 5th and 6th, that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you can go, you, you can, don't have to do just one thing for the weekend, you can do several things. But uh, blood dog, blood testing, or how, you know, how they, how they can actually trail different blood, hands-on demonstration, a shot site analysis, puppy training tips, question and answer session, and fire stories. Any, any questions called Lindsay Kiefer, here's Lindsay's number, th area code 386-275-9268. First ever United Blood Trackers organization. Okay, good, good job there. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing all these great reports from folks. And uh, we're getting ready to get uh, to our Friday fishing report. And I always talk about February, you know, how the sheep had a biting. Now, this is over in Destin, this picture here. This is not here in, in the Panama City area. This is over in Destin. But uh, if there were last weekend, it was cold weather. Then that's the same group of fish, just a different angle. That's not two sets of fish, but uh, that's, that was the legal limit right there. Okay. And if you, have, if you don't have a spare tire, what do you do? <laughs> you just make do. And that's not local. You can see that's in the mountains. So that's probably somewhere out in California. I'm thinking that's, that's not local. If it's local, we might have that on both sides. All right, enough on the picture. Let's get ready for our drawing. We gotta, we gotta uh, add some names, couple names. Remember you can add your names any time of the year. All right, all the way from Bascom, how about Tyler Patrick and Clay Patrick. Big outdoors and up there in Jackson County. All right, here we go. And I'm going to give away, I'm going to start uh, doing some random giveaways. I was thinking about this last night, just at random. So especially what this rewards the folks who just watch the show all the time. Because, you know, on Friday, we always give this away. But we're going to do some random giveaways next, well, I ain't going to say when, but we're at random. And uh, we're going to get a bigger pickle jar. All right, here we go. $20 gift certificate to, uh, down to Tropendock. I rode by Tropendock yesterday. Let me say this. 
I just, as I went across the bridge, I looked at it, and every time I'm down in that area, my mind goes history, historically, how, how that looked, you know, uh, 80 years ago, 100 years ago, and I, I could just picture those boats, but I counted like six boats that's coming, that, that seafood, those fish are coming from those boats into Tarpon Dock, into the counter, and we're buying it. It just don't get any better than that. It's been doing that for a long, long time. I just appreciate all the folks at Tarpon Dock and all those captains and uh, fishermen. Anyway, here we go. Twenty dollar gift certificate from Panama City Beach. Gloria Turner. Gloria's a big fisherman now. He loves to fish. I hear from her a good bit. And the big red snapper is going to be from Lynn Haven. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, the Pleasure family. Uh, I can tell you all kinds of stories about the Pleasure family, how they developed all kinds of areas and all. Good, good folks. Uh, all right, let's take a break and come back with our famous Friday fishing forecast. All right, welcome back to our famous Friday fishing forecast. Always glad you're with us. And again, as I say almost every week, this is based on the interviews, uh, interviews, the phone calls I get, text messages I get, and then I also pursue some information myself. And one of the things I found out real quick, somebody called a big pompano. The first big pompano has been caught this year. Now, don't get all excited, all you surf fishermen. Now, you know how this works. There's always some scattered fish. I, I, I guarantee you, if you fish long enough on Christmas Day, on the end of surf, you'd catch a pompano somewhere if the weather's okay. So it, this time of the year, it, it's going to always catch those scattered ones. And we've always talked about how those scouts come, what we call scouts, they're some of the they're ahead of everything. And what's going on there? And usually it's a bigger fish. And they're just they're sort of ahead of the game. They're sort of, we said they're scouting things out. But in reality, they're just uh, ahead of everything else according to their body mechanism. They're just moving faster with the water temperature. Right now, there's nothing to get excited about it. I know uh, people will say, well, Coach said uh, the pompano are not out there, and I caught one. You're going to catch one every now and then, but in a, in a day's time, you're not going to catch as many as you would in April. Okay, so just anyway, but pompano has been caught. If you want to go pompano fishing, I'm not telling you not to go pompano fishing or surf fishing with whiting, but go out there with the idea that you're going to enjoy that sunset and not you're going to load the box up, but you will, you know, you will catch some. Uh, let's jump over. I mentioned the Choctatchee River and all the feeders, all these feeder creeks and all. It's just a, really a cool place. Uh, here are some. You have the Sisters. You have Reedy Branch. You have uh, Mitchell River here. All, all these. And then you have Black Creek up in here. All these feeder creeks, they hold fish, folks, I'm telling you. Live Oak Landing and all. But this whole area here is just a really cool area and all through here. I talked about this some last week. Now, let's go to those sheephead were caught. Right here, around the sheephead, a picture I just showed you, again, in this area right in here, over in Destin, there were uh, some nice fish caught there. So the sheephead bite is really strong there. Now, let me say this in, in general. The three fish, I put one, two, three, if you're going to be, be out in the water right here. I, call, I, I thought of a new term last night, the focus fish. The fish you want to focus on for the weekend, if you're really serious about getting out this weekend. Number one, Redfish, number two, sheephead, and let's see, number number three, uh, well, the number three, of course, we're, we're, believe it or not, the trout are still biting, and uh, we're, you know, getting ready to keep them, the, the limit will be, I mean, it's going to open up back up uh, Tuesday, so those three right there. And the place you want to go, bridges, and the bait you want to use, now I'm talking about for the sheephead, the bait you want to use, I put three bait, cut mullet, live shrimp, and live pinfish. Those three will catch your sheephead, okay? But mainly uh, the, the live, the redfish are going to really enjoy a uh, live bait like the pinfish. And the pinfish are not going to catch the sheephead. I was wrong on that. The pinfish is going to catch the redfish. I've got so many notes written down here. Uh, but that, those are the notes I was talking about. Let's quickly look over to, uh, to freshwater. I wrote down uh, the crappie bite is still strong up in Lake Tyquan. They're doing well in Lake Tyquan. Again, these feeder creeks, different parts, so it's on the same places we fished before. What I call the Sand Hill Ponds up in Bay, Washington, and some over in Jackson and Holmes County. These ponds are holding fish, and the bass are in the pre-spawn. Got, we've got all kind of bass tournaments coming up uh, this next month, and coming all the way, uh, you know, almost every other weekend. We still have that uh, Tuesday night lunker, uh, lunker tournament, these hardcore bass fishermen. Not so serious, they're starting their series off. So we're going to be talking a lot more, a lot more about that next week. 
Uh, catfishing is so-so right now. The river's still sort of steady, falls down a little bit more, and uh, it's gonna be good. We're right around the corner from, it's not too early to start getting your fly fishing stuff together. I know you know, May, April and May is a good time to go, but you know, uh, I am starting to see carpenter bees, and that's always a sign to me of spring. They came in early. And you're talking about carpenter bees. I mean, I was invaded with them this past week. You know, that wind blew, 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 and then all of a sudden, I bet I had 15 or 20 come in. And so I always think about fly fishing when I hit a carpenter bee. They aggravate me, and I get after them and all, but it's telling me that you know they're sensitive to the temperature of the air and what's going on with the you know different things and all. So they're coming in, and they're actually. Uh, getting ready to, uh, to do some damage to my wood. <laughs> so anyway, that's a sign. That's a sign right there for the carpenter bees. Let's move on real quick. Uh, West Bay is going to be holding some fish real quick. West Bay will be a good place to go this weekend. West Bay and East Bay I would recommend strongly. West Bay and East Bay. When the Spanish do start coming in next month, they're going to come right, we're going to have a welcome sign right here. It's a little early for Spanish. It's 62 degrees and we're going to start looking at about 65 to 67. So. We'll talk about that, uh, getting on down here. Again, if I was going to fish this weekend uh, down in the eastern section, I would go, guess where I would go? Before, I'll try St. Joe Bay, of course. Uh, I'm running out of time. I would go to Apalachicola. I'd go to East Point Bridge right there. All right, right here. That's where I'd go. I'd fish off the East Point Bridge right there, okay? Uh, I'm running out of time. i got some more stuff. Thank you all this week for the, all, all the good comments and all you sent to us. Appreciate the viewership. Do something good today for your fellow man and have a great weekend. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.